All right, guys, welcome in and happy Friday. You're watching Unapologetic Live. Today, we're going to be reacting to some crazy, insane TikToks, which you know we are no stranger to. We can always find them on the platform. So without further ado, let's get into it. What's up, guys? Happy Friday. Hope you guys are ready for the end of the week, and I hope you're going to have a fantastic weekend. As always, drop your weekend plans in the chat down below. We got Taylor in Nashville. Happy Friday. Got my Happy Friday shirt on. What's going on? That's your Happy Friday shirt? I mean, it's got a pattern. It's usually I'm just wearing boring, <laughs> solid colors, but I was like, you know what? It's going to be May this weekend. JT's out with the memes, so let me just, you know, jazz it up a little bit. I love that for you. And we do have a special guest in the producer's bay. Uh, he might not talk throughout the show, but he is running boards for us. So Scott is not here. His name is Kobe. Uh, he's going to be hanging out. Hello, hello. <laughs> there he is. You guys get to see a glimpse of the mystery man behind the producer's bay. Today, we're going to be reacting to some fun TikToks. I thought, why not do something chill on Friday? And as I said, we are no strangers to finding really strange things on the internet. We're going to start off with a video from what ever podcast you guys know this podcast i've been on this podcast and i'm gonna say i feel like i started a trend because now all of these conservative commentators are going on the whatever podcast and i got the worst panel there was no crazy leftist girls on my panel so i've been coordinating with the guy who runs this podcast to go back on it and get sort of a, a second wind a second blow at this at this podcast because i wanted some cast because i wanted some heat and I got there and I didn't get any heat. I drove two hours to be there, guys. <laughs> I went on a trek to be on this podcast. So let's hear this clip from a young woman named Jubilee, who apparently is doing OnlyFans to honor the memory of her grandfather. Uh, I'm not joking. My name is Jubilee. I am 25 and I do have OnlyFans. How long have you been doing that? Just about like two months. What got you into it? I lost my grandpa. He's very close to me. I kind of want to go with his legacy and I kind of want to do it for him. Wait a minute! You want to do OnlyFans to honor your grandfather's legacy? More Was like, he like a corn been, star or something? No, it's kind of like um, I've been wanting to kind of like keep his legacy going. That will be my legacy. I don't know if I just misheard you. You said that you are... I don't know shit about fuck. Yeah, can you, can you say can it again? You, can you explain how you're honoring your grandfather's yeah, honor legacy? He was a minister, what? so he didn't make much money. That's like a way that I thought would help out. Wow! You said he passed away? Yeah, he passed away. But so I, help him out beyond the grave? I'm just confused. He was, you said he was a minister? Yeah, so he did Taylor. like weddings, funerals, <laughs> etc. Et Let me get this straight. You started an OnlyFans to pay homage to your now deceased grandfather, who was a religious man and minister. That doesn't make sense. I think your grandfather, do you think he would approve of the OnlyFans? Um, do you think he would disapprove? I think he would support me, but... That's stupid! Use your common sense! You mentioned uh, that you don't want to bring shame on your family. Do you think it might possibly bring shame on them to do nude stuff? What do you think? I don't think so. If I go deep down into my mom's opinion about it... I'm you know, I can't say that this specific girl is the one I would have wanted on my panel. Maybe like Kiko, if you guys watch the podcast, I would love to go head-to-head -head with her. But this is just such an interesting storyline here. Uh, first of all, rest in peace to her grandfather, and I'm very sorry for her loss on that part. The paying homage to your grandfather by starting an OnlyFans when your grandfather was not a uh, corn star, as they put it in this video, and not, he doesn't seem to be having been a minister, somebody who would be uh, inspired by such a profession. It's just very interesting to me that somebody would do this. And I just wish maybe that there had been a conversation where this young woman sat down with somebody and said, you know, I'm thinking of doing this in honor of my grandfather, if that's her true intention behind this. I wish there was a conversation had with maybe a loving peer or family member before making the decision to actually log in and make the uh, the OnlyFans account. Taylor, how do you <laughs> feel about this? Uh, I mean, it's hard because she says it so meekly and sort of seriously that you know, on its surface, if someone just came out with a statement like this, I'd think they were totally being disingenuous. But she seems to be sincere, and which tells me that she somehow convinced herself, uh, done the mental gymnastics necessary to connect the dots between this being, you know, a good thing that honors her grandfather and is morally okay for for her to do. But uh, it it's a huge stretch, and it's you know to. To not just throw stones, because I mean, it's easy to just sit here and 
talk about how absurd this is, but right. you know, I, it does signal that uh, all of us have the ability to persuade ourselves that absurd things that we do, it, bad things that we do, bad habits that we have, uh, can be justified. And we have a tendency to uh, just do whatever mental gymnastics necessary to do that. So if there's a, a silver lining lesson here, I guess, maybe it's, uh, you know, be careful of the story this, that you tell yourself to justify uh, things that you do that you may deep down not feel 100% comfortable with. Yeah. And be careful to be desensitized to what your occupation is putting out into the world. That seems to be what's happened here because she said when when pressed further about honoring his legacy and asked, what does that mean? She goes, well, he didn't make money when he was alive or he wasn't making a significant amount of money. Now through OnlyFans, I feel like I have the opportunity to do that. So she purely purely views this as some sort of vessel to just make a lot of money and is somehow detached from the idea that this is you know selling your body on the internet and selling sexual content on the internet and is purely looking at this from a money perspective which if you're on TikTok and Instagram and all these things, all you're going to see is girls saying, you know, this is your sign to create an OnlyFans. I'm making 80K a month or I'm making $10,000 a week, uh, you know, selling my body on the Internet. And at some point, I think with an influx of that sort of message in your mind, that is how you're going to see something like OnlyFans. It is just going to be a vessel for uh, creating wealth and building, I guess, generational wealth is what she's talking about in, in her story and her homage to her grandfather. Sooner or later, you know, it's going to lose that sort of taboo that it has. And it is just going to be some sort of form of, of making money for young women, which is what it sounds like now. I can't tell you how many young girls in particular I see on the Internet saying, you know, it's, you know, I finally made my decision. I'm going to go start and make an OnlyFans. And if you look into this for just a little bit to all the young women watching, you are not most likely going to be an OnlyFans millionaire, as many of these young women will tell you on the internet that you are going to be. The majority of people are not making anywhere near the kinds of money that these women are talking about on TikTok and Instagram. So they entice you and they bring you in and you go, you know what, why not sell some feet pics on the internet? <laughs> Which I can't say is a thought that I've ever personally had, but I could see why one would have that thought. And then you go, sure. It's just one set of photos. Why not do it? And we'll charge $12.99 a month or whatever it is that you charge. And the money doesn't come in like it came in for these women. So now you have this trade off of your pictures are now on the Internet for all of eternity. And you've left that, you know, footprints, that digital footprint there. And you didn't get the return that you expected. So now you either go deeper down the rabbit hole of posting more and more content and trying to create to make up for what you've lost. Or you live with the fact that the digital footprint has your naked body on it. So not great. I hope this young girl reevaluates that. Um, let's move on to another TikTok, guys. Have you ever gone on the journey of trying to lose weight or become healthier or just to be more conscious with your fitness effort and how it affects your body? If so, and if you've done that intentionally, this young woman is accusing you of fat phobia. Let's watch. Another great question this person was asking if there is any time in which intentional weight loss is not fat phobic. I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of the times if you are intentionally losing weight, it is fat phobic. I'm leaving that point little 0.1% in case I am truly, truly wrong. I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of statistics on the internet are made up <laughs> because that's what we just got there. <laughs> but I don't think I am. And here's the reason why. I'm not saying if you exercise and happen to lose weight that that is fat phobic. I'm not saying if you start a medication and you happen to lose weight that is fat phobic. I am not saying that if you're going through any type of, you know, illness and that is altering your body in some way that that is fat phobic i'm saying when you are intentionally exercising to lose weight altering your diet to lose weight doing any activity intentionally to lose weight is fat phobic and the reason why is because you are intentionally attempting to make your body smaller to fit into what narrative? The narrative that smaller is healthier. 
even though we've already discussed why that's not true. I know there was another comment on this video that said something along the lines of when I'm lighter, I don't have as many issues with my mobility. And that may be a correlation, but it doesn't necessarily <laughs> mean that extra weight is a causation, especially if you are not in care of somebody like a physical therapist that is specifically certified or has previously practiced physical therapy with a fat body. And I say that because as a personal trainer with a fat body, I know that movements impact people differently based on their body size, type, shape, mobility, a million things. So pretty much no. There is no time in which intentional weight loss is not fat phobic. Wow. Okay. That's like a, a full dissertation we just got there on uh, the subject of body positivity and fat phobia. It's just amazing to watch. This is really, you know, we obviously like to approach these things with compassion. And I can see how somebody would believe something like this. Most of these woke ideologies and, you know, these pieces of dogma that you hear on the Internet are driven by a deep sense of, uh, of a moral impulse, I guess is what we'll call it. She has a moral impulse that, you know, people who are on the larger end or who are fat should not be discriminated against. They should not be held back in society uh, from, you know, other people's judgments and all these things. And of course, that's a totally fine moral impulse to have. And you can look at people and, and feel bad and say everybody should be treated equally and have an equal opportunity in this country. OK, cool. But if you allow that moral impulse to sort of snowball into something that morphs your sense of reality or just shifts the way that we've always viewed the world. And that way being that being morbidly obese or being on the obese end of the spectrum is probably not the best thing for your health, your wellness, your mind, anything like that. She's allowing that moral impulse to restructure her reality. And that's what we're getting in this video right now. And it's interesting because there is no study or a piece of research that is going to ever back up that 99.9% .9 statistic that she gave at the beginning of this video. It's just not going to happen. In fact, Harvard recently did an 80 year long study on happiness in human beings and in men in particular. I haven't looked into the, the women's side of this yet, but in men in particular, they found that d exercise is a key part of of a healthy mind and happiness and should be prioritized in your life and not just exercise, but adhering to a certain body shape or at least the body shape that is a healthy maintenance point for you as a human being is key and should be prioritized in your happiness. So in knowing those two things, how could you say or look at somebody and say that if they are intentionally trying to lose weight, they are fat phobic? And, you know, I take issue with the term fat phobic because not only does it imply that you should have like this deep sense of fear of, of being fat, but also if you did have that deep sense of fear of being fat, you wouldn't be the most wrong individual in the world. It wouldn't be all that wrong to be a little scared of being morbidly obese. You know, considering that we know the health outcomes of that sort of health condition. If you looked at yourself in the mirror and you go, you know, I hope that when I'm 50 years old or when I'm 60 years old, I'm scared. I hope I'm not morbidly obese. That'd be OK. <laughs> you can say that. It's actually an a, it's a very rational fear to have for yourself, especially if you live in America with all the different foods and the processed junk that we're eating all the time. Perfectly rational fear to have. Is this Amala endorsing fat phobia? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it is. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like two things can be true at once. It, you, it can be unhealthy objectively to be fat and it, you can one can wish to avoid uh being overweight without being judgmental that doesn't necessarily mean that you're being judgmental you know somebody who's heavier i don't know the circumstances of their lives i'm not going to judge them as an individual for their current state but i can also not wish to be overweight for myself because i'm aware of the reality of uh the negative health outcomes that are associated with it and it's kind of ironic that she talks about the the moral impulse or you mentioned the moral impulse that she had to want to be nice to people and not be judgmental so, causes her to 
override her reality and to be blind to the reality and irony being that it's actually causing her to commit a moral atrocity in persuading people uh, of a lie that it is healthy to be overweight or it is not unhealthy to be overweight. And, you know, she mentioned correlation. Uh, 70% of COVID deaths were obese people. There's a correlation. And if you uh, structure your reality in a way as to deny that fact, you are, and lead others to do the same, by the way, uh, that is a moral atrocity on your part coming out of the desire to be nice and non-judgmental. So, and I feel like we see this pattern all the time uh, uh, from a lot of these radical leftist types that in the name of, you know, being nice to people's feelings or whatever, we're affirming things like gender puberty blockers and and uh, sex change surgery and things like that, that are harmful, or we're taking safety away from women's spaces or compromising the integrity of women's sports uh, in the name of protecting people's feelings. And this is where you have to stay tethered to facts, you have to stay tethered to reality, and you can't allow the ideological motivations or uh, the, the desire to be nice uh, and this misguided sense of virtue to override uh, just facts. Yeah, I, I've recently been listening to a lot of Gadsad and his talking about a parasitic mind, which is a, a book that he wrote about, you know, parasitic and in infectious ideas. And it's mainly about woke ideology and how one is just overtaken by these sorts of ideas. And it's exactly what you just talked about, Taylor. It's like this fear of consequences. So the consequences of hurting someone's feelings by talking about real objective truths when it comes to health is scarier than, you know, losing truth. So people would rather say, OK, I'll say whatever you want me to say because I'm scared of the consequences than go, you know what? I'll take on the consequences in order to pursue truth and to give that truth to other people. And then you fall into just this dangerous place that we're in right now where you have, I don't know, essentially a, a very large group of people who are willing to just bend the truth in order to shield themselves from the consequences of telling the truth. And that's how we get videos like this, where the people say intentionally losing weight is is fat phobia. If you right now are on a weight loss journey, that's OK. And maybe you are fat phobic. I mean, I don't know you. I don't know your your reasoning behind it. But if you are fat phobic, that would be OK, too. As we explained earlier, I never know which one to go on next. Um, you know, real quick. So while you're deciding uh, yeah. wrestling with art, this is not a super chat, by sure. the way, but uh I'm reading it because it's really funny. He said, uh, she is fact phobic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always down for a good pun. You guys so thank you. Which, by the way, the we will be reading Super Chats, everything above $2 minimum at the end of the show. And if you get $50 or more, we will read that instantly. So that's how we're doing Super Chats these days because y'all are keeping us here for an hour after we're done. Uh, so just throwing that out there. Yeah, yeah. Just so you guys know. Also, please like and subscribe if you're watching the stream right now. We notice so many of you are watching the show but are not subscribed to the channel. What y'all doing? Do y'all not like me? Subscribe to the channel. Uh, I love guilting people into uh, supporting this YouTube channel. Let's watch this next video that talks about denying children puberty blockers is apparently a form of mutilation. Here we go. The thing that gets me about the anti-trans conservative rhetoric around like puberty blockers for trans kids is it's not conservative rhetoric, by the way. It's just like rational human being rhetoric. This is not a conservative monolith on being anti allowing kids to transition. Plenty of liberals, plenty of even leftists who are against it. Anyways, I digress. Is that if they really did care about making sure children weren't being mutilated or weren't being like coerced, they would be the number one advocates for puberty blockers. Not only because they're empirically supported and because they were developed for cisgender people, but because they would realize that forcing somebody to go through a puberty with a dominant hormone that is misaligned with your actual gender, that would be, by their terms, mutilation. Because imagine if we sat a bunch of 13-year-old cisgender boys around and we were like, Hey boys, um, we know that you're boys. And we know that you've been boys as long as you've been alive and it's very clear to us that you are boys, but we just wanna be so sure. So we're actually gonna make you go through estrogen-based puberty instead. So that way, like when you get to the end of that road and you're 18, you can decide if you still wanted to be that boy that you, you know, always showed signs that you were. 
Can you imagine if we did that? That would be fucked up. But that's literally what you are doing to trans kids. Because forcing somebody to go through a puberty with a dominant hormone that is misaligned with your actual gender is a forced mutilation by conservative standards. So you would think that they would be the number one advocates for blockers and go, oh my gosh, yeah, why don't we like put a pause on this so that way you can decide and like in a couple years see how you feel. Like, I just wish they would shut up. Okay, first of all, 10 points for creativity. This is an argument that I've yet to hear on this subject, which is rare uh, in, in this profession to hear an argument that is, it is rare on the subject of transitioning children. So this person is saying, if you do not allow these kids to block their puberty, you are in fact mutilating them because you are forcing them to go through a puberty that is not of the gender that they believe themselves to be. So the lopping off of breasts during a double mastectomy or, you know, reconstructing private parts and getting injected with, uh, you know, hormone replacement, that is not mutilation. Forcing them to go through puberty, which is so such an interesting way to phrase that, forcing them to go through the puberty that their body was just going to naturally go through. And that when kids, after they go through puberty, they normally realize, oh, man, the throes of puberty just had me thinking I was a different gender and I'm, I'm through it, I'm on the other end of it, and now I'm not. That, that's mutilation. I, I honestly just don't even, I don't even know what to say because it seems as though this person is just turning a blind eye to what we know to be true. And as much as they're saying this is empirically proven and we have all the data to show that this is, this is the case, there's a ton of data and research to say the exact opposite of this. Not as much as I'd like because this is a fairly new phenomenon that young people are going through right now. But there's a ton to suggest that if you just step back, have the conversation with your kids, of course, address their discomfort, but allow them to go through the normal stages of puberty. They get to the other end and they go, oh, well, that was a roller coaster. <laughs> and now I realize that the body that I was born in is perfectly fine. And that sex is perfectly fine. And I don't need to go and switch genders. So to argue anything other than that, it's just so, so strange. It is so strange. Taylor, do you have, I, I, <laughs> I don't know what else I have to say. Here. Well, I also thought it was interesting that he said that puberty blockers were developed for cis people. As far as I know, the, the use case that I'm most familiar with is for chemical castration in Lupron. So that's a very strange thing to uh, invoke to try to support your argument is that they're developed right. for, yeah, for chemical castration as though it's not harmful. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's pretzel logic. You know, I, it is a new one to kind of characterize puberty as, which is an, a natural part of a human being's development into adult. It's a healthy thing. It should be uh, to characterize that as this oppressive force that you're forcing on someone um, to undergo. I'm, I'm surprised though we didn't see it coming since, you know, if math is racist and everything is the result of colonialism and white supremacy, that, that, puberty is also not a force of you know the cis hetero white male dominant society world um we should have seen it coming yeah things are just getting so unnatural i actually saw a tiktok the other day of these two doctors i guess talking about this procedure that you can undergo uh, as a woman when you are on the brink of menopause or starting menopause where you can you know surgically with things that they do uh in your reproductive organs you can pause menopause for like 15 to 20 years and it's not a surgery that they're currently doing in the United States or anything like that but they're hypothesizing that this is possible to do and I think maybe other countries have been doing it I'm like who is trying to just I don't know push off what is naturally going to happen to your body how did this become just an intellectual exercise that we're all trying to have now where we are trying to stive off natural things like aging and puberty how have we regressed as a society that we are now just pushing away anything that is natural and i i have to think that we've just decided not to ascribe meaning to anything and now nothing means anything and you can do whatever you want so why does menopause mean anything why does puberty mean anything why can't we all just have his her, his truth her truth my truth their truth and just follow whatever it is that we want to do even if it's harming young children as it is in this video and it, it should be clear if you look at this person right it seems like he's made a choice for himself and that choice is to switch genders or transition, at least socially. It doesn't look like he's undergone uh, the full medical transition here. 
somebody who's already made the choice, of course, is going to encourage other people to make the choice. It's the same thing we saw with Rachel Levine, the assistant secretary of health or something like that, coming forward and saying, yeah, of course, young people should be able to transition and we should get them as soon as possible before puberty. Well, yeah, you've already made the decision for yourself. Wouldn't you want to see more people like you running around in society? And of course, if they're children, you wouldn't care because... You've already made the decision. You're at the end of the route as far as medically transitioning. Of course, you want to push your own ideology onto other children. Of course, this guy wants to say the exact same thing. And they'll make whatever argument necessary to see that through. <sighs> I yeah, and one other thought here is also just, we, and we've made this point before, but why are we treating the, the word of confused preteens who are insecure and uncomfortable in their bodies as gospel uh, to inform a medical decision that'll affect them for the rest of their life. And I know we, they say, you know, puberty blockers are just temporary. It's putting pause on their, that development, which I think is is bunk. Uh, a lot of these people end up sterilized. And many, once you start, I think the, the vast majority, once you start down the path of social transition and puberty blockers, uh, they go on to further, uh, further treatments like uh, the cross-sex hormones and uh, surgery. And and at the same time, we know that if kids are not uh, encouraged and socially transitioned down this path, that the vast majority grow out of it. And so to take a young person's word about their confusion about their gender at the, you know, as a minor, as gospel, and then to just run with that um, is just insanity. And, uh, it, you know, like we say a lot when we react to these TikToks, it's the confidence for me. Uh, <laughs> as he was talking, it was just like, the, talk, he used the term cisgender. And he said, they're, you know, when they know their gender identity and just like without losing a breath. And, and it's like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. These, <laughs> these are not agreed upon terms. You're calling me cis. I reject that term because I'm still, I'm not in la la land. I'm still in reality. And so in your little framing of things, it all makes sense to you, but it's the same, same as the, the last fat phobia topic uh, that we reacted to or TikTok that we reacted to. You're, you've restructured reality according to your ideology. And we're, that's just something that we can't budge from because it causes harm when we do so. Yeah. And you'll find just the logic is so juvenile, especially with juveniles especially with young children on this when we watched daniel radcliffe sit down with you know six trans kids and talk about how they knew that they were trans one of them said everybody was telling me i was a boy but i didn't like superheroes or the color blue or playing sports and that was the justification for at 11 years old transitioning to be a girl and that's probably as far as you're going to get with most young kids because that's as far as their understanding it's as far as their lens goes is is uh as it pertains to gender and their own self-expression, the box is only so big, the window is only so wide as to what they're even seeing in the world. So of course, if they don't like sports or they don't like superheroes or they don't like the color blue, they're gonna feel an incongruence with themselves and with the other kids around them because we normally follow these little stereotypical patterns, but to take that and run with it and go, well, my kid knows himself and that means that we should transition them and all this stuff is just crazy. <laughs> I don't like to use the term crazy, but it's crazy. Uh, here's another one from a TikToker. It's on a different subject. We're moving on to the subject of race, which you all love so much. This one says that all white people are racist and she does not trust them. I don't trust white people. I don't trust white people for a multitude of reasons, but one of the main reasons is they're unpredictable. Like I think about all the times where I, really I don't know what you guys are going to do. Friends, and then when we got in a small argument, they released all the racism they hid throughout our whole friendship scary and then i think about the fact that i become mutuals with people give them the opportunity to come clean about any problematic past they say nothing and then they get exposed for being racist and it's never like some low-key like i used to say the n-word in songs no it's like n-word hard r against black people like like tell me why white people are normalizing racist past also i think about the fact that white people have continuously when given the opportunity oppressed multiple marginalized communities and I think about the fact how easy it is for them to do it again. Like, if they really want to, they would bring slavery back. They kind of already did with the criminal justice system. Plus the rate of hate crimes. I will legit always be scared of white people until they're the minority. Which I hope will be sooner than I think. I don't trust white people. Okay. <laughs> let's unpack that. Taylor, um, let's unpack that with you, considering you are a white man. 
Uh, I want to <laughs> give me. you. I want to give you this opportunity on the show. She's given the opportunity to all of her mutuals and friends. Tell me about the dark and twisted things uh, that you've done in your past, specifically instances of racism. <laughs> Over to Where you. do I begin? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, no. Uh, I mean, hopefully you're not serious because I, <laughs> I was I was raised in white Tulsa, Oklahoma, and my parents taught me to be like colorblind and taught me things like you know it's. Uh, not about the color of your skin, but the content of your character and that you shouldn't have prejudice. And so clearly those are all vestiges of, of, uh, you know, white supremacy that was just inculcated into me as a child. And, uh, I need to learn from this, uh, TikToker in her enlightened ways. Uh, it's amazing that, uh, she said all of her white friends were people that used hard R N words in their past. Like, Either she's insanely unlucky with her uh, choice of friends or who she's run into, or she just has an exceptionally broad uh, definition of what constitutes racism. I mean, obviously saying the hard R N word would, would constitute that, but I've lived as, you know, speaking as a white person, I've lived my entire life in mixed company, but, you know, around a lot of white people. And I don't know that I've ever heard, maybe count on one hand in my entire life, the number of times I've heard a white person use the N word. And yeah. that was back in like 10 years ago when that wasn't even a big deal. Uh, when people could say, say the lyrics and stuff. Um, so for her to just have such a, a, a high proportion of people that were racists in her book is pretty crazy. Right. I'm just like, where are you finding these people? Let, al let alone becoming friends with them. She said, I've become friends with them. And then I would later find out that they were racist. So you're telling me that you've met a white person who goes out of their way to be friends with you, to hang out with you as a black person. And, you know, I don't know, takes their time to shield their white supremacy while they're around you for what purpose? I don't know. Just because they want a, a black friend, I guess, to use. I don't she didn't really explain that. And then you end up not being friends with them anymore. And all of a sudden they're racist or you find out that they were racist all along. And then she goes on to say, and you know, whenever I meet people who are mutuals, I give them the opportunity to tell me whether or not they're racist. Is that how you open up your conversations with white people? <laughs> you ask them to tell you all of their racial transgressions of the past. Uh, I'm sure you're going to get really transparent answers on that one. And I'm sure Everybody's going to love you if you lead with that question. It's just so strange. And then she goes on to say that white people want to bring back slavery. And they would if they could. Yet also says that white people are the majority in our society. So don't you think they would do that if they could? Don't you think they would have never, you know, emancipated the slaves if they wanted slavery to still be around? Don't you think that white people would have never fought uh, in the Civil War on behalf of the North <laughs> if they didn't want, uh, you know, slavery to be abolished? Don't you think there wouldn't be a bunch of white abolitionists and civil rights activists and all these different people who are fighting on, on your behalf if they wanted to keep slavery alive? And again, there's just this massive separation from ourselves and people in our, of course, historic past if you were in, on, in the same group as the enslavers in our past, guess what you would be doing? Enslaving other people, you know? If you were the Germans in the 1930s and 40s, guess what you'd be doing, baby doll? If you were in countries in Africa right now that are still enslaving people and you were on the side of the, the powerful and the privileged, think about what you might be doing. There seems to be the separation as, oh, I would never, I would never if, you know, the all of the people surrounded me, surrounding me were engaged in this moral ill. I would never be the person to do it. You very well could be. And it's that degree of separation that you're putting in your mind that is not helping us to understand the issues and how, how they pop up. What we should all be asking is how does this happen and why does it happen and why do people fall for it? Instead of blaming white people and saying they still want slavery and they still want to be the enslavers. Try to understand why that happened, move on, address the fact that we have progressed, and just go on about your day. Because I doubt that this person is truly struggling with, you know, deep instances of racism in her daily life. I highly, highly doubt it. That's all I have to say on that. Any, any more from uh, White, White Taylor, since you are <laughs> from deeply, White Taylor. deeply accused uh, in this video? No, I mean, look... <laughs> I am sorry if you've had uh, 
on behalf of white people. If you've had uh, a bad experience and someone yeah. has uh, perpetrated racism toward you, that is a horrible, evil thing. But please don't extrapolate that to all of us, because I promise you, there's a lot of white people who, uh, like Amala said, died fighting for the end of slavery. Um, and uh, there are the vast majority, if you go out there uh, and actually talk to people, are perfectly decent human beings and uh anyways and i feel silly even having to say this but the the idea that you can take one experience and uh, extend that to uh all an entire group is very disingenuous and imagine if it worked in the opposite way as well anybody could do that right and i just want to meet these racist friends that she's made i really do i want to meet them face to face and and see what they're actually like it kind of reminds me of i don't know if you guys have seen this viral video horrible viral video of Kendrick Lamar inviting this white girl on stage to rap with him and she starts rapping the song and they get to the part where you say the n-word and because she was invited on stage she says the n-word Kendrick like cuts the music cuts her off stage tells her as a white person she shouldn't be able to say that word and of course this is the most embarrassing thing that could possibly happen to you live in front of all these people that's what this video feels like it feels like you made friends with people and made them comfortable and now that you're not friends anymore you're accusing them of of racism it's very similar and in that vein for me it's just insane and i have a video on this channel that you guys can check out of me and amir, amir odom talking about the n-word and the use of it and how we feel and we don't care i don't go around saying the n-word to people uh i don't think most people go around using that word in their normal vocabulary but if they did unless they're directly using it in a sort of derogatory manner towards me why would i care why would i care and i will tell you probably most black people for the most part don't care unless they're just like possessed by the sjw spirit <laughs> they mm. don't care it's just a word. Well, while we're on Namla, did you did you see that thing going around social media? It was like screenshots from TikTok where people typed in the search uh, in the bar that said, I hate black people. And it like redirects you to this anti-hate page or whatever. And I hate LGBTQ redirects you to anti-hate. I hate Jews. It uh, mm. just says no results. And then if you type, I hate white people, it's like, pages and pages of TikToks of people who have something to say about hating white people, which is just another thing that that uh, we can point out is it's always a one way street. Uh, and the fact that it's a one way street just points to the fact that we've lost sight of what MLK and uh, people who've gone before us have pointed to is that our values should dictate that individual humans should not be discriminated against because of their humanity. And now we have all these Marxist power dynamics and how we make moral judgments. And that shows up in the fact that we're willing to discriminate against white people or people who are higher up on the, the hierarchy and uh, that any even we make up ways that people who are lower on the, the hierarchy are oppressed or read into it or become overly broad. So uh, anyway, that's even shows up in the TikTok search algorithm and our Google search results. It's it's a dangerous thing. Yeah, we covered a lot of those TikToks in the Charlie Chan video that we re reacted to titled What Are We Doing to White People, which I urge you guys to check out. It is on this channel. And you guys it must have really resonated with you because there's so many comments and so many people talking about how wonderful his video was and it, that is 100 percent true it is crazy and i always say this you know if this continues in the next 50 years we're gonna have a civil rights movement for white people and that's gonna be uh insane insane i'm smiling because it's a little funny to think about but it's not okay <laughs> and it very well could happen i mean you're discriminating against them with like scholarships and college admissions in jobs with all these different quotas on the internet, it's everywhere. I can't imagine this isn't affecting some uh, white people financially with how banks are doing now and they're incentivizing, you know, black and Hispanic and all these different loans and just giving out assistance. If this continues on the track, especially with allowing people to say some of the heinous things that they're saying on the internet, I don't know what's gonna happen. I do not know. Now this, this video is going to be a little bit lighter. <laughs> this is a TikTok channel that goes around asking people and giving them prompts and they get to decide whether it is a red flag or a green flag. Now, this guy has gone viral. It's got 3.4 million likes. Let's see what he had to say. She wants to be the breadwinner of the family. OK, that's a that's a red flag. Oh, our computer. Oh, we lost. <laughs> we the lost screen. the screen. It happens every show, guys. <laughs> Okay. That one's I not even Kobe's back. fault. It's his first time, but don't judge him for yeah, it. That still, was just our equipment. He's killing it. It's just our equipment. <laughs> Here we go. 
She wants to be the breadwinner of the family. Okay, that's a that's a red flag. Family finances flag. are a team event, and I could appreciate you know wanting to be a higher level contributor to the family's income. But if that's the only motivator behind wanting to be the breadwinner is I want to earn the most income and give the most amount of money to the family, oh. are we looking at everything that's possible and what is best from a team perspective? When she gets married, she wants to merge your bank accounts. Oh, that's a tough one. Red flag. <laughs> so I'm married, 23 years. We have a, a joint bank account, and that's for keeping the house and the family going, you know, stuff for the kids. And then she has her money, and I have my money. And it makes it really easy for us to go and buy the things that we want to buy, buy things for each other, and do it in a way that's kind of surprising. She doesn't follow JC Rodriguez on social media. That's a red flag every day of the week. When you get married, she doesn't want to change her last name. That's a green flag. That's personal preference. Makes no difference to me. I know my wife took our last name but if she said i didn't want to take your name that wouldn't bother me i love Taylor. her for who she is and want to spend my life with her <laughs> can't see my face okay. i'm shaking my head yeah you were shaking your head at that very last one i would like to mm -hmm. hear from the the male panel that we have right now is is the wife not taking the last name is that a red flag for for you guys kobe you can answer if you'd like <laughs> uh i would i think it's kind of a red flag yeah i really? mean okay. it, it depends like the type of woman who would not want to take my name is not the type of woman I would probably want to attach my life to. Um, so I'll just, that's a matter of personal preference. I don't think it's like in principle, something that no woman should be allowed to do, but you know, I, uh, in the same way as the breadwinner question, I, I would tend probably not to want to pursue a woman that has that attitude that I want to be the primary breadwinner of the home. Now I'm, that's, on a spectrum, I'm totally open. Like there may be situational, you know, circumstances in which that would make sense for a season or something like that. Like I'm not some this rigid thing, but you know, as far as personal preference, I'm I guess I'm more traditional in that sense. But I want want a woman who will take my name, and I want to be the primary breadwinner of the house. I want to bear that responsibility as a man. Fair enough. How misogynistic of you! Wow, mm. so horrifying. <laughs> Kobe, <laughs> do you feel the same way? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think piggybacking off of, uh, of what Taylor said, I think I would probably be hesitant because of, uh, what I would infer other beliefs would be based off of that stance. Okay. So, so you're like, maybe I'm dealing with somebody who doesn't share my values if she doesn't want to take the last name. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Exactly. And Taylor, is that the way you feel? Or is it like, we want the same last name, so it's sort of homogenous or? No, I think, yeah, it's like more of a, it's a, it's a proxy for values. I mean, I'm a Christian and there's, there's roles. And part of the roles is like the man's the head of the household and all that. And mm -hmm. with that comes responsibility. And, and I think the name is just part of that tradition that, um, goes along those lines. And, and typically it's kind of like when you're watching a movie and they're like, do a race swap or gender swap or something. It's like, there's, there's a reason you're putting this in there. And it's <laughs> kind of, you're, you're, you're trying to subvert the values that, that we've historically you know, gone by when you, you have some kind of an agenda in doing this. So, you know, if it's just a matter of like, oh, you know, my dad didn't have any sons and we want to like do a hyphen thing, like, okay, we can talk about that. But, you know, typically I think it's this sort of indicator of some kind of feminist attitude that is uh, just a little bit of a red flag for me personally. I'm not saying no one should be allowed to do it, but that's just not what I would go after. Fair enough. I feel like I will take my man's last name, but not because I feel any like strong feelings towards it. I, I don't feel any strong feelings towards my personal last name, so I would never advocate like this really needs to be kept or it needs to be hyphenated. I know it's when I talk to people, it seems like men have a far deeper attachment to their like namesake and their surname than women typically do and i don't know if that's because the last name carries on through men i mean that would be you know a logical explanation for that but men seem to have like this deep attachment to the family tree and the last name yeah i think like from even from like evolutionary psychology perspective that not you know not all men only successful men reproduce and uh, so that's sort of like a validation as in your your manhood or in your existence that hey i i'm leaving something behind i didn't fail as a man to to carry on you know even from like a darwinian perspective and so i think that that's kind of hardwired into uh males because males have to compete to for females and for sexual selection um and i mean so that's making an argument you know leaving 
tradition and, you know, values and religion aside, I think that that's kind of ingrained in the male psyche to some extent. So I definitely think that plays into it. And I think that that's had a role in shaping our norms and stuff. And I, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I think the alternative and, and when you flip things around and mess with it, just tends to lead to more chaos and worse outcomes. So yeah. yeah, interesting. And on the breadwinner question, I asked you guys this on a community poll. Is it a red flag for a woman to want to be a breadwinner in a relationship? And 36,000 of you answered that poll and 67% of you said no, 33% said yes. So it was a mixed bag. I don't know this was what it, I was expecting. I think I sort of expected it to be split down the middle on this one because times have changed and it is pretty fairly common for both people in a relationship to be working now. So if a woman happens to be making more money, that would just be, you know, where we're at. Uh, the guy in the video said red flag because he didn't want that to be the sole purpose of the woman working, just purely to be the breadwinner of the family. And he wanted the best outcome. I could see where some men would definitely be like, hell no, she cannot be the breadwinner in our relationship. Even if she has a higher education, even if she has a, like a better market value out there in the job market, I am making the money. and <laughs> She's not making more than me. How do you guys feel about it? I would not, I would not fall into the latter camp. I think just as a matter of practicality, like one of my good friends, his wife is a physician assistant and makes great money. And I don't know if she makes more than him per se, but for a while he was, um, he was being a stay at home dad. And like, that totally makes sense to me. And, you know, she was happy working and he was happy doing his thing. I mean, he wasn't like being a deadbeat. He had his own projects going on and, and was still like working from home and doing some things. But anyways, I totally don't look down on that at all. And I think mm -hmm. that's much more of a matter of, of practicality and, and preference on an individual level. But I think as a matter of rule and principle, you know, there's, there's a certain, you know, taking on of responsibility as a man, as a husband, that uh, you have to see it as your job to provide and to make sure that things are taken care of now and if if in the matter of course of of uh, practical outworking of that you know turns out to be that your wife happens to have better education or better you know opportunities and earn more money then by all means in that circumstance but i do think that the the principles and just having um the a clear sense of roles in within the household and just you know the willingness to take on the responsibility and lead uh, on the on the part of the man is is the more important thing. But I don't think it needs to be this rigidly enforced thing. Yeah, I'd agree. Kobe, any any unique thoughts on the subject? No, I don't think so. I think just, uh, yeah, kind of uh, agree with Taylor in some sense. I don't think it's like a hard and fast rule. Mm -hmm. I think that it would just be, uh, you know, my wife has a master's. I don't have a master's. So the reality is, is at some point she's probably going to make more than me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm OK with that. Uh, but we've also had the conversation when we do end up having kids that um, she wants to stay home. And um, I would love to be able to provide that opportunity for her to uh, to stay home, raise the kids. What a rarity. And, yeah. So. <laughs> I don't. Is it rare? OK, is this you can also speak to this. Is that a feeling that most men you think feel in today's day and age? Most men feel like I want to find a woman to be able to provide and uh, provide for financially. Or do most men not feel that way anymore? I don't know how most men feel these days. Anecdotally, I do this for a living and watch too many TikToks <laughs> of Gen Zers who are male <laughs> feminists and, you know, <laughs> wanting to simp for their wives or whatever, not even want to get married, you know? So I don't know. I, I think that uh, it's probably a dwindling attitude in culture if i had to be honest mm. that it's a it's a minority a shrinking minority that still would want to see things that way um so yeah i don't know <laughs> mm, okay and any any male friends on your part feel the same way different way <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I've got a mix for sure. Um, and yeah, I think it's probably alarming uh, the <laughs> the lack of uh, of of friends that probably feel the same way um, can be sad at times, probably. Yeah, I see like a lot of young guys on the Internet are like, heck, yeah, I'll, I'll secure the bag by, you know, marrying this girl who makes way more money than me. And that's fine. I get it. And I know, you know, uh, I think for both genders, it would be nice to just not have to work and have somebody who's who's providing for you. And I don't want to just like blame men for for feeling that way, because it is sort of 
the burden that they used to take on traditionally. That was the man's burden. He was the protector and the provider. When the wolves are at the door, the man's opening the door. And at 9 a.m., he's going to work in the morning the next day. So to have a generation of men who are now saying, you know, she can work and she can make all the money. I get it. Um, maybe I don't approve, but I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm thinking right now of that movie, Don't Worry Darling, that we reacted to. Yeah. And how in the male fantasy, they are still going off to work every day, working hard and, and doing jobs to provide for their family. And then they come home. And the way the movie cast that is as this oppressive, you know, patriarchal structure and norms that the women have to be subjugated to. And to the degree that it is something where women are not allowed to make choices for themselves to not choose that lifestyle, then yeah, that is, you know, oppressive in that sense. And they should be free to choose the lifestyles that they want. But at the same time, Let's be honest. How bad is that to have someone whose whole life mission is to go out and provide for you and make it so you don't have to work and uh, have a safe place to call your home and can raise the kids and and be provided for? Right. And as a man, it's like it's funny that the uh, the fantasy that men have is still to go out and work and still to go out and and provide and hustle. And I think that just speaks to this uh, this innate drive to, uh, in order for me to be validated as a man, as in order for me to, um, you know, live up to my potential in some sense, I am someone who's worthy of a wife and who's worthy of, of being uh, a provider for a home and creating a safe environment for kids. And I think that's something good. And that's something that's celebrated. And that's something that, you know, patterning yourself after that leads to the opposite outcomes of, what we see in terms of like fatherlessness, you know, if if we don't have an ideal to strive for, that's in the direction of men should should provide and should be present and should strive to make a safe home and 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 you know care for their wives and all that. Then what else? What are we going to see in absence of that? And I think your well, the answers aren't good. They're not. It's not a better direction. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. Yeah, in watching, I was so excited to watch. Don't worry, darling. Because yeah, I love Florence Pugh. I thought you know this could be a really interesting you know, thriller. And that was the scariest thing that they could come up with, that the women stay home in this beautiful house with a nice car and they make dinner and have a pet or two or their kids running around in the yard. And then their husband comes home to eat dinner with them, have a nice night, and then they go to work the next day. That was the nightmare. <laughs> it's just so funny to me. She will probably sat and just watched through hours and hours of Jordan Peterson and all these different like conservative talk talkers and trying to find uh something that was villainous and that was as far as she got the subjugation of women so they can stay home and shop and cook and uh keep things tidy it's horrific she didn't listen to enough jordan peterson i guess <laughs> chaos <laughs> it's chaos uh guys we're gonna get into super chats uh so i'll have taylor pull those up so we can read through Alrighty them today room. I remember too. We we increased it to five dollar minimum, and I said two. So I guess if you if you gave two dollars and one cent, you're getting your super chat read you today are. because we don't want to be liars here. Uh, but all right, let's look at number one from Cracklin with a fleur de lis. Shout out to Louisiana or France. Mm -hmm. um, you know it's going to be salty response video when it starts with a pet name like honey or girl or baby. <laughs> I don't know which one of those that they're. Uh, referring to there's a few i think there was one that some uh, like a trans person made a hate video of mine and said like honey i don't think you know what you're saying here you always know honey sweetie mm. sweetheart the condescension yep every time uh and young no message but gave 10 great british pounds thank so you. thank you very, very much, much for that we appreciate uh that. savannah askew says our society's moral compass is so skewed now. Did you do that because your name is askew? Come by on the way? now. Come on. We love the We're... clever fans out here. <laughs> yeah, but, well done. Um, seeing some hope for turnaround through shows like yours. P.S. Taylor, check out the waterfalls in Tennessee. Oh, I didn't know I Tennessee I may have, have to do that. <laughs> when I lived here, uh, when I was in middle school, I think we went on a field trip to a place called Fall Creek Falls, and I don't remember much other than my science teacher was very excited about it. And uh, it, 
yeah, I think I got some ticks or something. So oh. anyway, I'll give it another shot. I'll give the waterfalls another shot. I mean, I always think <laughs> about like field trips you go on when you're a child and how you have you don't have the, the faculties to appreciate them. And then you're an adult and you're like, oh, damn, I wish I had actually looked around when I was 13 years old and I went to like Amish country or something like that. Right. Right. Because <laughs> now no, you're field like, trips oh, I, are don't, the best. I don't feel like going anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we need to make a vlog. Amala does an adult field trip or something. <laughs> uh, sup, my dude says if one finds the b minor chord on the guitar to be beautiful does that make them a minor attracted person oh okay that was almost too daddy for me that was <laughs> that was a real it was uh, one of those like i'm halfway through reading it and i'm like oh it's too late yeah I'm, there I'm we go have to finish this it's all, all fair and comedy <laughs> minor attracted person there you know minor chords do have a more ominous kind of tone and vibe to them so that is uh, i love a good song in minor key fitting um Halcyon Zhang just gives a super chat. No message. So thank, thank you for that. You. Dicks and butts. How's it going today? Always Welcome good back. to hear I, from you. <laughs> <laughs> I honor my grandfather's legacy by turning tricks behind Wendy's. Oh, <laughs> what does that even mean? That Is mean, that like turning skateboard tricks? tricks? No. Yeah. Oh. Oh, Taylor, I love that what? you just said that. That is the most wholesome thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I'm a missionary kid. You it's know? basically I don't know. What? pimping out women. That's what that, oh, that's what that means. Turning oh, tricks. Lord. <laughs> Thanks for my ears. Kobe, did you know that? No, no. <laughs> but, oh my uh, wow. gosh, this is wonderful. I wow. almost got to give us the the street knowledge well now i, I feel bad that i know what that means because i can't believe... urban dictionary wow <laughs> i love that you said it's that like oh, skateboard tricks oh my gosh <laughs> uh blizz biggie says as an ex fat man 100 pounds lost in 2016 congratulations, congratulations. i can say that because you know we're not th scared of being called fat phobic for saying that <laughs> um congratulations exercise and weight loss has been great to me i no longer am out of breath just tying my shoes being healthy if being healthy makes me fat phobic then so be it see but, that it'll change your health but, it really will yeah not being able to tie your shoes without losing your breath that'll make you fat phobic real fast yeah put on that david goggins what is that what is that uh, spotify <laughs> account you listen to <laughs> that you make fun of me uh akira <laughs> no, the I dawn love it. i love it Tell i love it that motivational it's like motivational music that ha it's it's uh, Akira the Dawn and I mean it's like David Goggins and Joe Rogan Jocko, Jocko Willink saying hardcore stuff to a oh, beat yeah. and uh, yeah it'll get you motivated so if you're working out go check that out uh, Biff 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 says fats don't care about your feelings you guys always put clever <laughs> you guys stuff are on it today chats. you really are play on words a lot oh, wow <laughs> and you know. I don't know what the exchange rate is right now, but that was a four ninety nine Great British Pound super chat. So that may have sneaked in um, under Love my that. nose. No, so perfect. I gotta I gotta check the exchange rates before we might I read as well just read them all undo. today. <laughs> I know I'm just kidding. I said two dollars. So uh, Dana Johnson, so thirty six year old female, former liberal, now more conservative. Love the show and can relate to how perspectives change and where we came from. Appreciate you. Oh. Oh, thank you. I always love to hear from former liberals because, you know, you guys were just like just like me and now you're hanging out listening to this. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're doing something right if people like you are finding us. So thank you. Um, Rhonda Girard says, me and my daughter both love watching you, Amala, sometimes just for a laugh, but always wisdom imbued in the conversation. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's so very sweet. I'm glad I make you laugh. I don't think I make a lot of people <laughs> I don't think I'm the funniest of the bunch. <laughs> I mean, just your laugh makes people laugh. So oh, you don't even have to tell makes jokes. some people. Remember that guy who used to leave hate comments saying that he, he would say like, this girl giggles too much. I can't watch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you proceed to giggle when you so read that. So true. Uh, mm. uh, Franklin, just, just Franklin says, uh, Democrats are anti-whites. Liberalism is anti-whitism. Go free. Wait. What is anti-white? What was the beginning part? I didn't hear it. <laughs> Democrats are uh, white and liberalism is anti-whiteism. I mean, it's at least That's... leftism. Woke leftism certainly is starting to feel more and more like that. I always try to make the distinction. Yeah. And then but but if you're playing those identity politics games, then you're just, you know, falling to their level. So anyways, Jade QP says hey in the uk another one and so happy to finally catch you live from a former lefty keep going amelie you're fantastic thank you 
very much. Was that a good British accent? How was that? Thank you. I might be going back uh, to the UK in June. Should I do like a UK? I didn't realize how many of you in the UK are listening. Maybe I could do a UK meetup or something. That'd be cool. It's not like you guys can, I always get like weird with meetups because I'm like a little bit paranoid with stuff that happens, but it's not like you guys could shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> I just get stabbed. <laughs> See, you are funny. That was a good one. <laughs> oh man. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Great. Um, okay. Julissa Castillo says, it was so easy for that long hair man who thinks he's not a man to advocate for puberty blockers when he went through normal puberty. I roll. Uh, yeah. I wonder I wonder if he's paid to say this because that was asinine. The only argument that I've heard where I'm like, okay, if you truly think that these kids should transition genders and that you truly feel like they believe that way, they believe uh, who they believe they are is who they actually are, then uh, you could say that puberty, not going through puberty or striving off puberty, it makes transitioning so much easier. That's the only argument that I've heard that would even virtually makes sense for allowing children to transition. But the basis of the argument, in my opinion, is false. And not just in my opinion, in science's opinion. <laughs> science. In the opinions of what science. What are you, Dr. Fauci? Follow the science. <laughs> the opinions of science. In my opinion, which is the opinion <laughs> of the science. Yeah, right. Uh, Autumn M. Mason says, America is one of the most obese countries in the world. So this isn't really shocking. It's sad more than anything. Yeah. Love you. Keep up the good work. What is it? I think I, I actually am not going to name the name of the association because I don't want to say it wrong. But some medical uh, institution in this country is now advocating that children who are suffering with obesity be put on things like Wagovi and Ozempic. It's just crazy. Instead of going, you know what? lifestyle needs to change maybe culturally we should change things up ozempic and wagovi oh crazy crazy you know i always talk about how i praise michelle obama for doing that get up and play movement that she when she was first lady i think that is so wonderful and i don't that should have been something that they passed on to every single first lady who comes into the office at the white house because what a brilliant initiative to put forward for young children and it's gone which sucks that would have been a great thing yeah, now our health secretary is a trans person who's pushing child gender transition or sex yeah. changes. So, oh, how the how far swings. we've fallen. Halcyon <laughs> <laughs> um, Song again says, forgot to send my note. Oh, sorry. Oh. Uh, I just want to make a PSA that Amala is objectively beautiful and I refuse to hear anything else. Love from Stop Italy slash it. China. Stop it, guys. Too sweet. That's how are you in two places at once, by the way, Italy and China, you're getting Asian and European love at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> kind of sounded weird. That Anyways, Julian weird. Gian Grande, we're just going to move on. Uh, hey, Amla, what's your political compass? Have you done that test? I We did it a really long time ago. Maybe I'll do it again on this show on like a fun Friday where we can all take it together. I think... Uh, what is what does the political compass end up? I can probably tell you relatively where political it's compass far left graph. Chill. <laughs> far left chill. Whatever that is. Um, it was a uh, conservative grifter last time I took the test. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so it's this one. Oh, you can't really see it. Can I zoom? Oh. We okay. So wait, it's, her screen, authoritarian. it's right and authoritarian, right? This is, um, I think when I took it, I was like in this area, like oh, a wow. little to the right and a little up in that authoritarian box. I feel like now if I took it, I would be here, but I don't know. Shifts and A little changes. more libertarian, a little more centrist. The, the questions are just so... They're just not great questions to actually assess how you feel. Yeah, it's tough when you know like how it's placing you based on the questions. Right. And stuff. It's like, it's would you never allow gay it. people to get married ever? And I'm like, <laughs> OK, no, I'm not going to click Jail. that. Yeah. So it's just, yeah, not not great questions. Uh, alas. OK. Uh, Bobby says Kiko claims she found God now. I roll laughing emoji. And is totally faking her personality. I feel like conservatives made her feel really stupid because now she's trying to paint herself as totally different. Hey, you never know, though. You never you never know. Maybe maybe she had a wake up call in going on that show and being called out. And now she's actually evaluating 
her ideas. I don't know. I've not watched the whatever podcast recently to see where Kiko is at in, in her journey. But don't be too quick. Maybe maybe she is truly evaluating. Could be. So Rosen says, I'm 19 and I've always been fat. Thank God. Recently, I was able to start losing weight on purpose. I have never felt better. I'm proud fat phobic as I never plan <laughs> on going back. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> See, I like this, uh, you know, characterizing fat phobia as being afraid of the fat itself, not of people who are fat, but of the negative outcomes and negative health uh, things that are associated with with right. the uh, being overweight. So that's let's be fat phobic to the extent that it's uh, hurting us. Yeah, and it's not like you need to like watch the scale every day and every pound is something that you need to be scared of or something like that. But just make sure you're not getting to an unhealthy place in life. That's all. That's all. Mm -hmm. And at minimum, you're yeah not moving more in that direction. Like you know, be moving in the right direction. I think that no one's going to be judging you as long as you're not trying to tell people that moving in the wrong way is the right thing. So, right. Anyways, uh, right learning RLL. I would say puberty blockers for kids and delaying menopause are very different. Humans have been looking for the fountain of youth since the beginning of civilization, and medicine seeks the similar. All I'm saying is they're similar in the in the fact that they are taking on natural processes that our bodies go through and on a pretty like patterned timed basis for virtually all of human existence and they're going oh why not why don't we why don't we just stop that <laughs> which can't be good right just because you can do something does not mean you should do something and the menopause thing is really wild to me. That's really wild. Because if you think if that is something that's actually accessible, especially in the United States, how many women are going to be lining up for that procedure? But from what I heard, it's a, a apparently a procedure that you have to do when you're like in your 20s and 30s where they take a part of your reproductive organs out and I think they freeze it. And when you hit the age where menopause starts, uh, starts for you, they re uh, put in that part that they've taken out and it extends the like the pause on your on your menopause apparently and i don't know i didn't read into the efficacy of this procedure or whether or not it's being done they were just talking about the possibility of it being something offered in the united states and scary i don't know to me that's scary and i can't think that that's normal natural or anything that we should be doing but that's just me mm. glad i'm a boy that's all i gotta say about that <laughs> <laughs> um Teresa Cross says, I didn't like pink, loved to climb trees, was a total tomboy, and I've always been a girl, now a woman. Ridiculous. Dude, I was a tomboy too, and I was totally geeky, nerdy, weird-looking kid. You, If I was growing up right now, I would totally be transitioning to be a boy, especially with how, you know, with how I grew up. You all know, know. I probably yeah. would be transitioning in some way, shape, or form, probably like socially. Oh, gosh. What would your boy name be? What would my boy name be? Amal is a really <laughs> hard one to like put into put into male, like a male. I can't even think of a male name that starts with like Am. Um. We'll workshop Jam it. Jamal. <laughs> Jamal. Jamala. <Yeah>. Jamala. <laughs> yeah, we'll work on it. We'll guys. work on that. Put it in the chat if any ideas yeah, for yeah. Amal's Let me boy know. name. Uh, Aislinn says they're saying white people are inherently racist for just for existing. Meanwhile, they're being racist against white people just for existing. Liberals confuse me so much for so many reasons. It's very confusing, isn't it? I have nothing to say other than that. Yep. <laughs> That's <laughs> confusing. It doesn't make sense, does it? But then they make you feel crazy. It's like you're being gaslit. They make you feel crazy for thinking that does not make sense. Biff, biff, biff. More a great British pounds, thank you, says, thank you so much for what you guys do. Thank you for supporting the show. You thank guys you have put much. Armando, Aubergine, that's not, Aubergine. <laughs> come on now. Amalo, Amar. Armando, Amish, Amar, okay, Amar's pretty good, Amir. Amir, yeah. Like Amir yeah, Odom, yeah, yeah. We know an Amir. <laughs> good answers, guys. We'll keep working on not it. Not great, uh, but good. <laughs> <laughs> Just good. <laughs> Passable. C. Jen says, Amala, your knowledge and experience continues to amaze. I'm constantly learning from you. Thank you, former liberal here. I'm so I bad have to know because I cannot figure out what is your intro jingle saying. 
we got we get a super chat for this every single show. The intro is saying "Young Apollo with the." And again, we we didn't make this intro song. We got it off of Epidemic Sound. We just got it off of some guy who makes you know music that you can license or whatever. Uh, it says "Young Apollo with the," and then it goes into the beat. I think that's what it says. I'm not even sure that that's what our that's our best guess. Says. Young Apollo with the. Dum, dum, I love that dum, you guys dum. are like sitting at home thinking that there's some like deep message in the intro music, and we paid like 99 cents to get it. Yeah for this show yeah if you play it backwards it says dennis prager is awesome yeah. <laughs> uh joelle ellis says just got married and i didn't take my husband's last name we both have same values and it didn't mean anything about how i felt of him i don't feel it's fair that only the male's name carries on i mean i think that's fair i'm i'm not totally like oh my gosh i would totally disagree with that uh but I don't know. It's so funny, though, because if you... Okay, so let's think about this, right? If you're a woman who's saying... And this has speaks nothing to your marriage. I'm sure your marriage is going to be successful. You're on the same page of things. That's wonderful. That's great. But you, you say, I want to pass on my last name. Your last name is a man's last name. So you're not technically... Like, your last name is the last name of another man. So you're, you are just... I mean, it, it might be your, like, bloodline's last name, but it still is the last name of a man. It's still patriarchal. Oh, in, that's true. In a sense, if that's the way. Also, there's people who like hyphenate your names, right? And they like go hyphen. But how long can you keep doing that for? Like, imagine you hyphenate your kids' names, <laughs> and then he's like, "No, I want to hyphenate my name when I marry a man." And then you have three hyphen names, and then the next woman's like, "I want to hyphenate my name because I want representation <laughs> in this marriage." And then you have like a person with sixteen names. I'm just saying, thing. choose one name. It can be the Isn't, woman's name or the man's name. I forget but. how it works in like Latin cultures, but they, they do something different with whose names they keep and stuff. But we got a $51 super chat, so I have to read that now. Let's do Skipping it. Skipping ahead. No diggity 24-7 for the precious innocence of the crew. Loved it, and I'm still laughing. Thank you. Taylor warms the heart. Thank you for all you Aww, do. <laughs> thank you. Yes, That's I funny. love that you didn't know what turning what tricks is. Turning tricks? <laughs> turning tricks at the Wendy's or whatever it was. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Behind the Wendy's, yeah. You guys are going to corrupt <laughs> Taylor. Skateboarding? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I know. My having to watch these TikToks and things. I just, I'm getting my innocence corrupted on a yeah. daily basis. Um, Jimmy Mapes says, Amala, what is your walk up slash intro music? Also, you are an old soul. Is Are there any musical genres or groups pre nineties that you enjoy? Pre nineties. Uh, Paul Simon. I like Fleetwood Mac. I like, who else do I like? Crosby and Nash, just a lot of like 70s music I listen to a lot. Um, yeah, what was the other question? What, what is the... Uh... What's your intro or walk-up music? We talked about the intro music for the show, so what would be your walk-up music? You know what that is? Is that I guess like you do. UFC, UFC fighting? Like walk-out music? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, <sighs> when, in baseball, walk-up music is baseball because you're walking up to the plate. But, oh, you know. it'd be something. It'd be hip-hop of some sort. What did I say last time? I We got asked this question. I gave y'all an answer um i it'll constantly change let me let me look through my spotify real quick um <laughs> while she looks that up biff 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 i don't know if i missed this but thank you for your super chat you said uh thank you so much for what you guys do so oh, thank you it's very sweet right now it would be conceded by flow millie i will pick a female rapper for my walkout music just to you know represent it's conceded by flow millie it's got a good beat uh, if I was going to walk out and fight somebody or do something like that, <laughs> I would need a good need a good song because your girl is not <laughs> she's not stacked in that department. Let's see. Let the bodies hit the floor would be your walkout music. Oh, gosh. Horrible. <laughs> I don't like hardcore like metal. That. I can't. <laughs> uh, Stephen Barker. Thank you for your super chat. No message. Robert Kiefner says as a gay man my ex and i were both adamant at working and providing i think it's biological instinct if i were a stay-at-home husband i could also do housework and yard work etc so it's still practical yeah i think it's just if you have the means one should set aside time to be with the children in whatever your relationship you know structure is somebody should be home with kids if you can manage that it's unfortunately it's becoming the reality that most families are not able to to manage that which is sad but yeah no um jennifer domingo 
gives what are what is php currency i'm always fascinated by the currencies here is that like philippines maybe um it says that hello is... amala taylor and team it is nice to hear from people with your perspectives hope more people would listen to you sending love from the philippines oh she said thank right you there. yeah philippine good, peso yes. good job taylor thank you jennifer um tulia taminen just gives super chat thank you for that no message jeff raidmaker what is the hard R N word? Is there a second N word now where the hard R clarification is needed? Appreciate y'all. Well, oh, well, that's <laughs> yeah, right. Well, let me tell you what the hard R N word is. Stream has been banned. Yeah. Mm. Um, what is he saying? Is there a distinction that needs to be made between ah and er? <laughs> right. Is this a serious? Yeah, is this, I don't know if we're being trolled here, but I, we, um, you know what the word is. Found it out. You know what the word is. Same um, word, different ending. But yeah, I think that actually, I will say the how you end that word probably does have a direct correlation to probably how you feel about it signals that intent. demographic of people. It does signal intent a little bit. I think we're aware. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sebastian Morgan, having been born the year of the dragon, I simply wanted to compliment you on the tattoo, Amala. <gasps> Thank you guys like Haku. Funny story, not really funny story. This morning I was doing a news interview, so I'm wearing this outfit, right? And I get a call from the producer because this was on, I think, like Newsmax or something like that. And they're like, I'm so sorry. Do you have a blazer to cover up your tattoos? And I didn't realize that this was still an issue for like con conservative media or anything like that. So I had to put on my little bulky jacket and cover up my tattoos to be on the news this morning to be a wholesome conservative wow. woman see that just proves that you are not a shill because the leftist in you would have been super offended by that and yeah like, no you need to take me as i am accept me as i am or you don't deserve me i could have said i was discriminated <laughs> against yeah exactly you could play this the is victim a brilliant card. opportunity that i've missed mm -hmm. <laughs> just pretend you didn't hear that guys <laughs> they, they were being tat phobic uh, wow. <laughs> uh <laughs> I can't hate on y'all's dad jokes if I'm making stuff like that. Yeah, that's no, true. April Rap, Hi, Amala and Taylor. Love the show. Thank you so much. Stephen Barker, again, um, as an atheist and left-leaning person who's been pretty fed up with everything lately, it's great finding someone who shares most of my views. Heart Aww, emoji. Welcome. That is so wonderful to hear. I'm glad that you found a safe haven on this show. Welcome. Yeah, check out the Discord if you haven't. There's mm -hmm. plenty of like-minded people. Hanging out, duking it out, sending each other cat pics or whatever else is going on there. But uh, it's a great place to meet some like-minded people on the internet. Uh, links in the description. Tim Osborne says, recently came across your channel. You are absolutely wonderful. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Jeffrey Jackson, you guys are awesome. Nice shirt, Taylor. Have a nice weekend. Thank nice you. Nice shirt, Taylor. Thank you. <laughs> Dixon Butts, yet again, $2 minimum. Wow. Y'all are on sale today. <laughs> We're turning tricks today yeah. for $2. Oh <laughs> See, I learned quick. Mm, oh my uh, gosh, maybe not. <laughs> Franklin says, people of all races should oppose anti-whiteism. White well-being does not mean hating other races. All people of immutable characteristics are welcome. This is so very true. Everybody should oppose anti-whiteness or just anti-any, fill in any color or race. It's just so... Crazy. It's just so crazy. That's just my catchphrase. That's my uh tagline. It's just so crazy. <laughs> just so crazy. Hashtag just so crazy. Cassidy Weathers recently came across your content and it's wonderful to see others around my age using common sense when approaching this chaotic world. Well, thank you. Thank you. And let's see, there's a couple more. Um, no diggity, we got you. British no Birdie. Diggity. I love your show. Glad there are some reasonable young people on this site. Thank you. Thank wow, you. The, the UK came out in force today. Usually it's Finland. I know. Recently. I did go back and look at the analytics and you guys, you said that what, 50 or 60% of our audience is in the US and everybody else is outside the US. So yeah, something like crazy. that. I think only like 55%, which is crazy. Do you yeah. guys get fed up that we only talk about stuff that's happening in the US? Or is that just interesting to you guys? Are you just coming to us to get your pulse on the United States? Yeah, we got to be a little less, uh, you know, U.S. Yeah. centric, I guess. A more worldly. Mm -hmm. um, Molly, I saw your comment that we missed yours, but I'm not seeing it in my little feed here. So uh, I am apologize. But if you send it again, not like the money again, but put it in there and um, we'll 
put it in the chat. Yeah, put it in the it. chat. I'll try um, to look for it as well. Not not Ryzen's, a super chat. Oh, okay. Yeah, not a super chat. <laughs> Special deal for you, one dog. <laughs> <laughs> Rice and Spice says, speaking up for women, I love and respect your show. Thank try. you. Ben Ford says, have you seen the beef between Candace Owens and Steven Crowder? If you have, what's your take? I know. I was trying to avoid this. Talking yeah, I'm surprised we made it this far. Honestly. I know. <laughs> I have seen it. I will say we don't have all of the information from both parties. And, you know, I think Candace is maybe commenting on this because her name was brought up uh by Steven Crowder. So, I mean, if you're going to bring somebody into this conversation and bring somebody into your drama, she has every right to respond. So that's what's happening right now. It's not looking good for Louder with Crowder. That's all I will say. That's, yeah, it's tough. Yeah, that's what um, I'm going to say. Let's see. User Rick says, Amala for president. <laughs> we need to do the math so we can figure out when you're eligible. It's like, what, 13 years from now? I would be the worst president. Yeah, 13 years from now. I would not be a good president, guys. I'm sorry. Just that attitude proves you deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Raidmaker says, I, sorry, I was being serious about the hard R question. Never heard the hard R description before to describe er versus a oh i'm sorry that i characterized you as a troll um, <laughs> you just you <laughs> for just asking questioned. an innocent question yeah no if anyone knows about not being innocent and not knowing things it should be me <laughs> <laughs> with the a right so just a brief little crash course on the n-word <laughs> with the a it's more friendly you know my a you know you could say that back and forth I don't recommend you say it back and forth, but you could say it back and forth, and that would be a, just a more friendly a colloquialism. If you use the ER at the end of the word, you're going back to the old 1800s, uh, and you don't want to refer to anybody with the with the ER. Just wouldn't recommend it, or unless you have a death wish, <laughs> yeah. then by all means. Uh, I just thought of in rush hour when uh, Jackie Chan says the N word to the guy at the bar. And you guys probably don't know, I've but that's one of my favorite. I've not He's seen the rush hour. He's like, it. "What's up, Matt?" And then he starts a whole bar fight because <laughs> the guy did not like that. But, <sighs> anyways, uh, Greg Gage Turquoise says it would be interesting to see you have a conversation with Lucas Botkin from T Rex Arms, considering you believe in some firearm restrictions and he is aligned with all gun laws are infringements. T Rex Arms, all gun laws are infringements. So he's like. Get those automatic weapons out there, brother. <laughs> I should be able to have whatever the government has. I don't know that he has a Southern accent, so I apologize that I've just given <laughs> that to him. But uh, that is very interesting. I would love to hear. I would love to hear that argument. I really would. I'll I'll check him out. T Rex. An like, uh, another in uh, instant read from Robert Kiefner. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Hello from Florida. Query for you. Are you? You're in Florida. Are you British? He's saying, hello, I've got a query for you. <laughs> if I identify as filthy rich, will I automatically become wealthy? I can't get enough of your channel. You all are amazing and stay groovy. You okay, know? you're definitely British. Stay groovy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Austin Powers. Or from the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> um, if I identify as filthy rich, will I automatically become wealthy? You know, if you believe it, it must be true. You say <laughs> the lie uh, enough times, it becomes truth. You'll be wealthy in mindset. You know, there in, you in your delusion. And if you're <laughs> delusionally wealthy, aren't you just really wealthy? I mean, in today's world, your inner reality and inner feelings supersede right. biology. They supersede reality as we know it. So this is really a deeper philosophical question. If you tr if one truly believed himself to be wealthy, would he actually be wealthy? I mean, not physically or tangibly, but you might actually be. You might actually be wealthy in spirit. We'll give you that at least. Um... Chloe Cagle says, love Studio Ghibli. My favorite is Howl's Moving Castle. <gasps> it is also so refreshing to hear a conservative option nowadays, maybe opinion nowadays, especially at a college setting. My favorite is also Howl's Moving Castle. Even though I have Haku on my arm, uh, Howl's Moving Castle is my all-time favorite. Also, shout out to Princess Mononoke and, of course, Spirited Away. All of his films are amazing and I am always amazed. A lot of people know who Hayao Miyazaki is, but if you do not know who he is and you have like HBO Max or something like that, watch all of his all of his films. Fantastic. I'll watch those when you watch Lord of the Rings. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like when you talk about that, I, I like this is how Amla feels when I talk about Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I honestly am going. I've tried to watch Lord of the Rings. I did not get very far. 
but I will attempt again. I will. Just Tragic because you and stand. Scott love it so much. Kobe, are you a Lord of the Rings fan? Uh, yes. Big, big Lord of the Rings fan. Why do I keep Thanks. falling so But also, also this? Studio Ghibli fan. So oh, oh, oh my gosh. Bridge in the gap. <laughs> No. Scott, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. That's awesome. I got to step up my game, I guess. Um, G- Gianluca Kripa says, a hug from Brazil. Abraço, Juliana. Muito obrigado por estar aqui hoje. See. I sent a hug back and said thank you. Gosh. <laughs> Taylor the polyglot. Uh, uh, Rice and Spice says, also a big... I'm a big fan. Have you guys heard of the Wisconsin school cover-up on the four 14-year-olds versus 18-year-old trans person? With the shower thing? is that I have heard of that story. If this is what you're referring to, there was these girls who were in their like locker room or shower or whatever at the school, and an 18-year-old came, a man came and showered uh, there or exposed himself to them, which is just horrifying. And they didn't tell the parents. They didn't alert anybody. It's clearly a, a Title IX infraction. It's wild. But it's nothing new. Nothing new. And there's going to be more. Just wait and see. Uh, British Birdie, again, says the U.S. stuff interests me. I think a lot of it seeps into the Internet, too. So it influences those in other countries a bit. Oh, Yeah. I mean, when I was, the last time I was in the UK, well, the first time I was in the UK, first and only, the people who I talked to were either like getting their view of America from a sort of left-leaning perspective where they're like, conservatives are horrible and they're racist and all they do is sit around and watch Fox News, or they were feeling sort of the wokeness that was in the UK. So it was really interesting to get both perspectives, but sort of like a diluted version of it. Like it's not the same as it is here in America. It's a doesn't seem as strong but you guys have like the Tavistock clinic and all that other stuff that's happening in the UK so maybe it is just the same as what's happening here did you see uh, we almost talked about this today but uh, Melissa Chen's thread on on Twitter the other day uh, was talking about she's from Singapore and she was talking about how when she was young everyone looked up to the US and uh, it was like goals to go visit there vacation there and visit the the country and now she goes back to Singapore and she's like everyone's like we're getting all this woke stuff from there. They're crazy. It's degraded. I don't want to be there. Their crime's out of control. Their cities are nasty. And I'm like, you know. Yeah, we're not looking so no strong on the detected. world stage anymore. Yeah, alas. Uh, that Delia girl just sends a hug emoji. Thank you Thank for that. Thank you. Um, Aislinn, again, says, when I was a kid, I had a bunny called Haku. Spirited <sighs> Away was one of my favorite movies. Surprised, but also glad to see you like it. That is so cute. A bunny named Haku. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we've got a poster in the studio, too, from Studio Ghibli. If you do. cut to uh, camera two, there we go. We've got yeah, all, so. like, all the major characters are chilling on that poster. Love them. Chilling. I don't know who any of them are, but <laughs> it's there. We'll get there. I need to put a big uh, picture of Aragorn beset behind me <laughs> so I can complete. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Daniel Carroll, I'm not sure what to make of the situation between Crowder and Owens. I think it's best to wait and see what other information comes out in the near future. Oh, yeah. A measured, a measured response. It is interesting, yeah, because he said, you know, don't ask me questions about the divorce or whatever, but now he's releasing everything, apparently, and he's going to unseal all the documents. That was his statement today in the wake of what Candace had to say in the video coming out. So we shall see a lot of, po- a lot of people spoke way too soon and were, you know, coming out in favor of either party and, and specifically in favor of Steven Crowder. And then this video comes out. So you have no idea what's going to happen. No idea. Yeah. It feels like a lot of <clears throat> us are out over our skis on this topic. It's kind of like, this is. It's also like, so s- separate from us like why right. why are we so worried about the inner workings of somebody else's divorce now it's different if they come on the internet as a public right. figure that you know and trust and they give you information that is faulty and then you know they need to be taken to task for that but just to be interested in this divorce on its own is a kind of a strange thing in my opinion especially since hillary does not seem to be a public figure of any kind and she was not making her own content so it's just it's just interesting but when a party lies or like puts out a false narrative, then it's, you know, the gloves are off. I got enough drama for my entire year watching Love is Blind with my <laughs> wife. So Jackie uh, and Marshall. <laughs> the conservative uh, drama reality show is just not my cup of tea. No. Um, all right. Flynn 
Vasens says, have you heard about the assisted suicide thing in the Netherlands for 1 to 12 year olds? 1 to 12? I'll have to look into that. <laughs> that sounds a little ridiculous. I, I've seen some tweets along those lines, but uh, I mean, not, not specifically about 1 to 12, but something along a controversy with involving minors. Um, what does a one-year-old suicide? suicide even look like? That doesn't even make, that does not make sense to me. No. I mean, we are living in a time where we're, you know, removing people's body parts that are 13 if they say they want that. So I just looked up assisted suicide but... one to 12, and then it gave me like a helpline as if I'm one to <laughs> I should have been more specific in my search. Anyways. If, now, if you were a white person, <clears throat> would it give you the same results? <laughs> <laughs> right. It says, what does it say here? It says, <clears throat> Netherlands to broaden euthanasia rules to cover children of all ages. This is a headline out of The Guardian. I will have to read into this. Yeah, we'll, oh, we'll look into it. Oh, for ages 1 to 12 who suffer unbearably and have no hope of improvement. So like cerebral palsy, spina bifida, stuff like that. Uh, I imagine. That's a whole different, no, that's whole different ballgame. Yeah, that's, that's, like just, a, that's just like a tough, horrible position yeah. to be in as a human being. Yeah, I don't know. Oof. Okay. Um, let's see. Joelle Ellis says, Amelie, you're so smart and funny. So glad I found the channel. Taylor, <laughs> you're pretty you. okay too. <laughs> did it really say I'll that? take pretty okay. Did it really say pretty okay? It did. That is, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Remember when you guys used to call him like Tyler and oh my gosh. Oh yeah. That's a, that's a way throwback. Travis. Travis. <laughs> When we uh, first started on the old show, uh, I did not have a camera on me, but my voice would be on all the time. And then it right. was like a whole, what is, we need a Taylor reveal. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, let's see. Flynn Vicence again. Also keep up the great work. All of you. I always listen to your podcast. Thank, Thank you. you, Flynn. Our podcast is on Spotify as well in video format. So if you want to take it on the go and leave us a five-star review because Dylan Mulvaney fans bombed our reviews there uh, when Amala called them out like yeah. a year ago. So. Went down to like two and a half stars in the wake of that. We got like 2,000 reviews or something like that. It was crazy. I don't, I don't know yeah. if it was 2,000, but it was something crazy. <laughs> All haters. <laughs> it was not fun. So it helped dig us out of the hole. We're, we're, we're leveling up. I think we're like back up to like over four stars now. But uh, Sebastian Morgan. Favorite celebrity meeting you've ever had, Amala? Mine would be when Tone Lock asked if I'd ever thought about being a rapper after reading my poetry. I don't know that I've ever met a celebrity. Nothing comes to mind, so I must not have had any notable celebrity meetings. I will say, Matty Healy of the 1975 followed me on Instagram and then deactivated his Instagram. So, oh, <laughs> so that sucked. Uh, but that was a great moment, considering that's been my favorite band since I don't even know how old I was. So uh, yeah, that was, was a good one. I saw the guy who plays Roy in The Office at a Sweet Greens one time. And uh, ah. didn't say anything, but I saw him. <laughs> So that you for the longest time you complained that you never had any LA celebrity sightings. And then I saw Roy from the office. So that Roy. remedied all I of saw it. Toby at, at the uh the local uh happy hour bar that I used to go to. Yeah. Uh, Toby from the office. And you saw Toby McGuire, didn't you? Oh yeah. Yeah. Bungalow. So you're seeing all the Monica. Tobys. Yep. I saw April Floodgate from uh Parks and Rec at uh Dinosaur Coffee in Silver Lake and Okay. Just all of the things, yeah. Yeah, that's all I got. I've not I've not had like a major, major. Sorry, Roy. You don't get out much. It's fine. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Kobe, have you had any celebrity sightings in L.A.? Uh, not L.A., but I actually met Ewan McGregor in a coffee shop in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, wow. where I grew up. So I've seen more celebrities in Bartlesville, Oklahoma than, <laughs> than L.A. so far. But I'm only that's two weeks good. in. Yeah. So what are the odds? Yeah. Wow. Wow. You'll appreciate this, uh, Kobe. I I worked as a PA one time, got super randomly roped into a movie that was filming in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, and uh, was working as a PA on set. And the, John Rhys Davies, who played Gimli in Lord of the Rings, was the the star in that film. So yeah, that was kind of crazy to see. That's incredible in Oklahoma of all places. I think it's so. cheaper to film there. I think that why there's so many yeah. movies out Cheap there. Cheap and but, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, you, that's very kind of you, uh, Amala, to give Flyover Country the benefit of it. <laughs> kind of like rock, you know, Great Plains, not much going on topographically, yeah. but yeah, it's all right. We love it though. I love Oklahoma. Um, okay, Nicodemus, nineteen eighty four. 
I keep thinking we're at the end and there's just more pop up. So okay. we're almost done. Though. We're almost uh, done. Nick Games 1984. Hello, can we expect another Tomb Raider training session like the one you did with Cameron Haynes? Cheers to you and your team. Okay, guys, here's my idea, right? Okay, I'm thinking another day in the life. This one, instead of Cam Haynes, we're going to do a UFC fighter. Okay, you can leave your. Uh, your recommendations down below. I have a couple in mind already, and one of whom follows me on Instagram. It's sort of active on my page, so I feel like that'll be an easy ask of, of that person in particular. But if you guys have any other suggestions, uh, I know many of you are probably going to say Colby Covington, uh, since you know he's pretty openly conservative. Um, but yeah, I would love to do a day in the life of a UFC fighter. That would be money. I would love to do that. And hopefully on a day that they're actually fighting. Uh, so that is the goal for the next day in the life. We're up in the ante. Of course, we also want to do like Jocko or David Goggins or something yeah. like that. Something insane. Uh, I would not survive David Goggins after the five mile run we did with Cam Haynes. <laughs> On a mountain. Five miles doesn't sound so bad on a flat ground, but Dude, yeah. The amount of soreness I was experiencing the day after that was just unbelievable. And he did not play around. He did not play around. <laughs> yeah, if you guys haven't seen that, it's on the uh the channel. So go go back a couple of weeks. It's on the videos tab and uh it's uh day in the life of Cameron Haynes or becoming the ultimate predator with Cameron Haynes or something like that. So go yeah. check it out. Also, you guys overwhelmingly voted that I should redo the UFC video. And now I have to because now Israel Adesanya has come out uh, calling Dracus Duplessis a cracker on video in a podcast after hard he R. said <laughs> with the hard R not a cracker a cracker <laughs> with the hard R in his video over Drake is mm -hmm. saying that he would be an African champion which is insane to me insane to me so we're gonna redo the video I'm not gonna call the continent a nation anymore <laughs> in the second video and we're gonna get that that back out because that blew my mind so needless to say the day in the life will not be a day in the life of Israel Adesanya because racist so that's yeah, cool lord knows i couldn't go as the cameraman <laughs> um flan again says you guys are still getting a bunch of super chats are you sure five dollars is enough to slow us down lol apparently not apparently this not. is like your third five dollar one today so we gotta yeah. squeeze some more money out of you guys i guess <laughs> i don't know how we're else or well i don't know we'll figure it out we'll figure out a way to do it that's not us trying to sounding like we're asking you for more money we're just trying to keep the show at a you know timely you know, it's, end it's of supply time. and demand. It's capitalism. What can we say? You know, I know. It's not... <laughs> uh, I'm bored. Says, have you heard of the murder of Junko Ferrada? No. Is that like an anime or something, or is that a serious story? That sounds ominous. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know how to spell that. But uh... meantime, uh, Tulia Taminen says, "Love from Finland, ex leftist feminist." Great to have you. Thank you for watching. Thank you. The murder of Junko Ferrada is an actual Feruda is an actual case. Uh, oh, not heard Lord. of it, but it was in eight, 1989. So I'll have hmm. to look into that. Not heard of okay. it. Okay. Uh, that Delia girl forgot my message with my sticker. Oh, sorry. As a former leftist, 32, and never listened to podcasts before or had Twitter, here I am getting unwoke notifications on so i don't miss your live again that's so funny we have a documentary that's going to be coming out soon and i think i can kind of clue you guys in and say that it's going to be called unwoke inc so that'll be coming out and it's about alternatives to woke corporations so it'll be coming out very soon hopefully in a few weeks or a month or so I'm not sure Yep. And we, we hear all the time that no, people don't get notifications when we go live. So just remember, we're live 3 p.m. Pacific, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern in the U.S. So and now I, I got to start incorporating uh, time zones from around the world. I know, right. <laughs> Since so many of the viewer, you guys are overseas. But yeah, um, so just keep that in mind. I want to find a better way to send out notifications directly since we can't trust YouTube too, but stay tuned for that. Um, Robert Kiefner again, I'm not British, just very Mexican hashtag delusions, 2023. I love it. <laughs> Perfectly describes the state of the world right now. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Uh, muchas gracias in that case. <laughs> <laughs> Flynn again, favorite food from another country. Everyone on the team can answer if they want. Yugusi, Nigeria. Ah, uh, that's fine. Uh, 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 uh. I am blanking right now. I'm like, well, not my heritage, which is Norwegian. The food's not that great to be yeah, honest. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, I'll just go with 
ramen. There's a place called Killer Noodle in LA that makes this. Uh, Taylor loves that spot. Dan Dan Noodles, and it's so good. So, um, there we go. Kobe, you got a favorite foreign food? Uh, Taylor, you stole mine, but uh, oh, no. but I'll go basic. I'll go pasta Italian. Nice. I mean, hard, right. hard That's to hard beat. to beat. That's classic. It is hard, hard to, beat. to beat. Yeah, like um, the Olive Garden, so good. I love Chinese <laughs> food too. Panda Express, uh, Mexican chilies. Yeah. Just, Really connoisseur in foreign uh, yeah. cuisines. We've got everything here. <laughs> uh, Molly Beth says, I was canceled by my sibs today, trans and non-binary. This podcast got me the courage to stand up for myself. Thank you oh, so much. Oh, man. That's really hard. Wow. wow. By your siblings. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, I'm glad that's you tough. found the show and it's making you feel better about the situation because that's a rough that's a rough situation. Uh, it's It sucks that when you have just thoughts that are different than other people's that it can cause such strife within your family and oh that, that's horrible. Well, you know how that is a little bit yeah, a little bit but we got our way through it and you most likely will too i think at, at a certain point especially when people are, are maybe younger and just more emotional it's hard to realize but eventually they will realize that you can still be family and still have a, a very strong relationship and hopefully you realize that too because those are things you're going to want to keep around in your life, regardless of how they feel about gender or anything like that. Be there for them. Yeah. But thank you. Thank you for watching. Glad yeah. you are finding this encouraging. Yeah. Thank um, you. Janice Journey says, I'm so happy I caught a life. Thank you for what you do. Keep, keep spreading facts and shutting delusional mm -hmm. things down. Love your show. Thank you. Thank you, Jenna. North Georgia Infantry 95 says, just wanted to say you run a great show. You are one of my favorite YouTube content creators. Keep on trucking. Thank you. And thank you for joining the show. We appreciate all of you watching live. It looks like we have another one here from Rock, Paper, Scissors. Not going to be able to afford these super chats soon. Amala could post that you're uh, you're going live on Insta. Yeah, maybe I should do that on, on Instagram. We could do a story. I used to do like five minutes before where I tell you what things we're going to be talking about and put that on Instagram. So I will start doing that for you guys again so that you know and uh, turn on your notifications for my Instagram. I think that's a thing. Uh, and hopefully that'll be better at alerting you. With that being said, that is the end of our show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Real quick, Robert said one more <laughs> okay. uh, just to support you. Haha, -ha, thanks. Thank so, you, Robert. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> we appreciate <laughs> that. Leave you hanging. And we appreciate all of you for watching. Again, please like, subscribe, click the notification bell, even if it doesn't work, to be notified every single time we're live. That's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific to 6 p.m. Eastern. Plus, we post videos for you guys every single day. We never miss here at Hustlers University. This is the free Hustlers University where you're not paying however much Andrew Tate is charging to, I don't know, teach you what? I don't know. <laughs> this is the free Hustlers University over here at PragerU. Guys, thank you so much. Leave a comment down below. What was the most interesting TikTok that you watched today? And did you learn anything new from these libs on TikTok? Did any of them change your mind on any given subject? Are you now convinced that all white people are racist? You let me know. And as always, we encourage healthy debate in the comments. Go back and forth. Tussle it out. Guys, have a fantastic weekend and we'll see you all again on Monday. Bye. Bye, guys.